live now. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Amrita and I am going to be showing you how to make a vegan tiramisu in the Optimum G2.6. Um, I'm just going to wait for a couple of people to join the stream before I start. Um, that way you don't miss out on anything. And if I look cross-eyed, that's because I'm looking at two screens. Got a few people in. Up. Hi to anyone that's just joined. Um, like I said, my name is Emrita and I'm going to show you how to make um, a vegan tiramisu in the Optimum G2.6. Um, so a little background, um, I created this recipe out of pure spite <laughs> um, because a long time ago, I think it would have been like 2014 or 2015, um, my partner back then, he brought home a tiramisu from a place called Mantra Lounge in Melbourne. So if you live in Melbourne or if you've been here, you might have um, visited. It's, um, it's in Carlton, I think. And he brought home this tiramisu and it was so nice that I got so angry because I was like, I want to make something like that myself. So I tried and I tried and I tried and I figured it out. Um, and today I'm going to show you how to make that. So a few things I'm going to point out is that I'm using refined coconut oil in the mascarpone cream. You know, when you're a kid and you do this like all the time. I used to do this like no matter what I was doing. Uh, I'm digressing. But um, yeah, so I use refined coconut oil because that doesn't make um, everything taste of coconut. So a lot of vegan desserts you'll find taste heavily of coconut. And that's because they use extra virgin um, coconut oil, which has that, you know, coconutty flavor that we're also used to. So if you use refined coconut oil, you're not going to get that flavor in your desserts. And in this, uh, and in this case, I don't want my tiramisu to taste of coconut. So I'm using refined coconut oil. Okay. Now, first up, um, we're going to make a sponge cake, which is going to act as the ladyfinger. Stop doing this, okay? <laughs> as the ladyfinger component um, of the tiramisu. So, in this bowl, I have got six tablespoons of sugar and four tablespoons or 60 grams of Nutlex, which is a vegan butter substitute. I've also got um, a pinch of salt and some vanilla extract in there. So what you're going to do is you're going to cream this. I do this by hand. You can also do this in the thermal uh, in the thermal cook. But I find that for a small quantity like this, it's just a lot more efficient to do it by hand. So I'm just going to do that. If it sticks to the whisk a little bit, just knock it out. And if you need inspiration to beat this, think of someone you hate and just do it. And no, I'm not going to take that statement back. So you want to cream, don't have to go like overboard. You just want it to look a little bit aerated and light. Um, a little tip is make sure all your ingredients are room temperature so that way you know your mixture doesn't curdle. Okay, once that looks nice and light, in here I've got cake flour, also known as pastry flour, a bit of baking powder, a bit of baking soda. Um, I use cake flour just because I prefer using cake flour um, in desserts. It has a lower gluten, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It just has lower gluten and um, it results in a much more tender and soft cake. Um, and in here I've just got some plain unsweetened soy milk. So we're going to do this in three additions. First you're going to put one third of your flour mixture in here. Just one third. flour everywhere good um, okay then you're gonna whisk it in might be a bit difficult at the start because it's really dry but just keep at it okay now you're gonna put in half of the soy milk Just 
Again, if it gets stuck in the wrist, just nudge it out, spatula or something. It will get easier as um, we go on. So mix. Once that, ni that is nice and mixed in, you're going to put your second third of the flour mixture in. And then just repeat with the rest of the soy milk and sink. And then finally, just the last bit of flour. And that is all there is to it, except for all the dishes I have to do. But we'll ignore that right now. So you whisk, make sure it's smooth, no lumps, but you also don't want to over mix because um, then your cake will end up. Okay. Now I've just got um, a cookie sheet that is lined with baking paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually spread this out. And you want to spread it out thin so that it bakes really quickly. there it doesn't have to be perfect that's fine because we're going to rip the cake up later so we just just want to spread it thin enough that you know it bakes in like five to seven minutes I've already got the oven preheated to um, 175 Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit um, and then I'm just going to pop this in So that will take somewhere between seven to 10 minutes um, to fully bake. And in that time, we're actually gonna make the mascarpone cream in the G2.6. So I'm just gonna bring this down here and tell you what the ingredients are. Pull it out. I've got a new jug, so it's all nice and shiny. In here, I have three, one and three quarters of a cup of raw cashews. Um, again, if you need the recipe in detail, it is, it's going to be um, on the Facebook group. It will also be in the follow-up email that you can get sent after you tune in. So um, again, what was I saying? Yes, one and three quarter cups cashew. Um, you want to use raw because um, we want a very neutral tasting cream so that we can add the vanilla and the coffee and stuff. And I do not soak these prior. Um, I know a lot of dessert recipes call for you to soak your cashews first, but I don't do this for two reasons. First reason being the G2.6, like, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to blend it smooth regardless. And the second reason, which is actually more important, is that when you soak your cashews, it's going to absorb water and then it's going to mess up the ratios of liquid to um, dry ingredients in the mixture. And your cream might not set and it'll end up being soup and you could probably still eat it but I definitely wouldn't um, recommend that. So into the blender, cashews, I put it in a jar so that I look cool and you know influencer-y. Okay and then I have got again um, soy milk unsweetened three quarters of a cup. Um, if you don't want to use soy milk, I've used almond milk before. Um, I would shy away from using rice milk or anything too thin because you want your um, cashew mixture to be thick and rich. So, and that goes. Also going to add a pinch of salt. So I always have this theory where if you're making something sweet, you should add a bit of salt to round up the flavor. And if you're making something savory, the tiniest pinch of sugar, I don't know why it, it works. So, yeah. In here, um, I've got a third of a cup of agave nectar and a third of a cup of refined coconut oil. It's all melted. I just measured it out um, prior because otherwise I'll make a huge mess. Um, if you don't want to use agave nectar, you can use rice malt syrup. I would not suggest using maple syrup because it has a, it has a flavor profile that's a bit too strong. 
So yeah, you want something that tastes quite neutral. So in that goes another spatula. And what else? Oh, I'm gonna add the seeds. Uh, I'm actually gonna add vanilla bean paste because I don't have a vanilla pot today. Um, you can use extract, of course. I just like using the paste. And this will make the base, which will then divide into two, and we'll add espresso into half of it and a bit more soy milk into the vanilla bit. So, chuck the lid on. And the G2.6, remember, we get a lot of people complaining that it just doesn't turn on, but um, there's a little button here that you have to press when you plug it in, and that will power up the machine. So if you're having issues, that's probably um, the best solution. I'm gonna turn it on, and um, for this, I'm just gonna set it, you can set it to whatever, you know, I'm just gonna set it to smoothie. And, we might need the temper, we'll see. Um, and then we just go blend. I'm just going to check on the cake. Okay, that's, that'll take a couple more minutes. Um, so you want to check that your mixture is smooth and free from any sort of um, lumps. I'll probably go another, another round because I just want it really smooth. So let's do, I'll do a manual setting this time. I'll do 30 seconds. do is divide this in half. So let's put that spatula. Okay. So half you're gonna put in a bowl. See it's really like thick and creamy. Almost looks like um a dip. I'm not even going to use the H word because I don't think I pronounce hummus correctly. I'm not going to offend anyone. Half. Doesn't have to be super accurate, just eyeball it. Okay. And then to this half, I'm going to add four tablespoons of soy milk. So this is going to lighten up the mixture a little bit. Making a mess wherever I go. And then slowly but surely sort of mix this in to one half. It'll be difficult at the start, but just persevere. 
and sorry if I'm not looking at the camera. I just want to make sure I'm not making a mess. <laughs> it's almost there. Probably use a whisk would be easier, but my whisk is in the sink. that's nice and smooth. Now we're just going to check on the cake. Give it one more minute. Basically you want to bake it until the middle, you know, if you stick a little knife or a skewer in, it's, um, it's going to come out clean. Speaking of clean, let me tidy up a little bit. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about the coffee component of this tiramisu. All good tiramisus always have um, coffee liqueur. Obviously, if you um, don't want alcohol in your dessert, you can just use coffee. So in this little cute cup, I've got about half to three quarters of a cup of espresso, three tablespoons of sugar, and three tablespoons of coffee liqueur. I bought the cheap stuff because I'm poor. But, uh, you know, if you want to go all out, you can use Kahlua. Um, you just want to mix it until everything dissolves. And this is going to be your soaking syrup um, for the sponge cake. Um, and in here, I've got more espresso, which we're going to add to that second half of the cream to make a coffee cream. Um, you can use instant coffee, but I tried it with instant coffee and it just doesn't taste that great. So, I mean, if you've got a coffee machine, even one of those, you know, Nespresso pods or something, um, just brew, you know, as much as you need for the recipe. Otherwise, what I did was I went to, um, go to a cafe, but like I said, I'm poor. So I went to, um, Woolworths and it's got this DIY self-serve coffee machine thing. And I just bought a couple shots of, um, espresso and yeah, I bought it yesterday. I put it in the fridge, you know, it doesn't have to be fresh or anything because we're not actually drinking it. So let me just get the cake out. It's not, um, it's not going to take on much color or anything, so don't worry if it's pale, it doesn't matter. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this to cool. So I wouldn't advise against putting hot things in your freezer, but for the sake of the live stream, I'm just going to do it anyway. Ugh, so many things in here. God. Okay, so we're just going to let that cool down. I don't even think the freezer will close, whatever. Um, so, meanwhile, we're going to work on the second half of the cream, which is going to be the coffee cream. So, like I said, got that espresso and the second half of the mixture. We're just going to add that in. I'm not going to add all. I'm just going to play it by ear because you don't want it to get too thin because it's not going to set up, right? Use the temper, and we're just going to blend this. You can do it by hand, but um, I find that by doing this, you get to sort of clean the blades as well. So let's do, um, we'll just do 25 seconds at speed six. off so we have more space and then get your second bowl and simply transfer the cream out Sink. yeah I'm glad we didn't add any more because Um, and as you know, because um, these 
the optimum blenders are so powerful, they might end up heating your ingredients somewhat. So as this cools down, it'll set, um, it'll set firmer. One thing that's really good about the G2.6, I find, is that the jug, the base is pretty big. So, you know, you don't really encounter that problem of stuff being stuck at the bottom of the jug. It's pretty easy to get everything out. Because I don't know if you've tried, you know, making thick, I even like ice cream or something or just thick stuff in um, any other brand. But it is a pain in the beak to um, you know get everything out but with this it's pretty easy because even a regular size spatula can go in so we'll into the sink it goes if anyone wants to help me wash the dishes that would be cool okay so most of our components are ready we're just going to have to assemble it soon uh, i'm going to wait for the cake to cool for another couple minutes um and in that time, if you have any questions, just type it. And I've got my computer out here so I can also see what you guys are saying. Um, let's see. Hi, Kim. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Lisa. Hi Eva, hi Cameron. Thanks Tammy. Um, and don't forget that at the end of the stream, we're going to um, give you your discount code, um, which you can use on any appliance on the Freebie Australia or New Zealand website. So stay tuned for that. And again, the recipe, the full recipe, all the quantities, all the nitty gritty will be sent to you in an email, or you can also find it on the Fruity page, the Real Food Revolution page, um, and the Fruity family group. So if any of you are in the group, um, the person who usually attends to those comments is me. So hi. Um, I, some of you might not like me, but I think most of you are cool with me, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm the person who handles most of the social media comments on the group. Uh, and I do a bunch of other stuff for Fruity as well. Magic. Okay. So the cake is now cool ish. And you, hey, now you got the choice of doing this either in individual glasses. You can do like stemless wine glasses. That looks really nice if you have a party or something. Um, but because I am actually going to give this cake to someone for their birthday, I'm just going to do it in a little plastic container. You can use glass. You can use whatever. I've used a clear one so that you can see um, the layers and stuff. So... Now, the really simple, easy part of assembling this. So although we've made like a whole cake or a sheet cake, you want to break the cake up so that you increase um, its surface area. And then when you do that, it will absorb more of the syrup. So break pieces of your cake and put it down at the bottom of your vessel. This bit is just like making a classic tiramisu. You want to make sure you know got the cake at the bottom. I'll use half the cake, exactly half the cake for the bottom and the other half for the middle layer. And yes, I'm using my hands, but I did wash them, so. Okay. Now for the bottom layer, we're going to spoon the syrup on. You'll see I'll do it differently for the second layer and I'll tell you why later it later so many times in that sentence okay anyway you want to make sure that all your cake is covered in at least a little bit of syrup because the worst thing that could happen in a tiramisu is having dry cake and i really hate that so make sure everything is absorbed you may not use all the syrup um, 
if you don't want to waste the leftovers, you can always add a bit of soy milk or normal milk or almond milk for a boozy coffee cocktail. Okay, you see the cake is well soaked. Now, the fun bit. We're going to take half of the vanilla cream and we're just gonna carefully just spoon it over, try and get it in an even layer if possible. Um, just cause it looks nicer, but you know, it doesn't really matter. Most of the time I'm too impatient anyway, so half of it. Okay, so at this point, what I would actually do when I'm making it at home and not, you know, on a time constraint is I would freeze this for about five minutes just to let that layer sort of set up. Um, that will give you very clean and even layers. Um, um, you know, I don't even know what I'm saying. Yeah, I would freeze it for five minutes um, and then I would put the coffee layer on top. But because, you know, it's a live stream, I'm just going to YOLO it and put half of the coffee mixture on top. Try not to mix it in if you want to get the layers. But I mean, if it happens, it happens. It doesn't really matter. It's gonna taste nice anyway. Okay, tap it down a little bit. Get rid of the air bubbles. And you've got your first layer and now we're just gonna do that exact same thing with the second half of the cake. But this time I'm going to soak the cake in the syrup directly and very briefly because what I don't want is for that liquid to sort of get it, uh, find its way down into the cream and you know just mess everything up. So quick soak, not too much. The cake is very absorbent which is why I use this recipe. Obviously, if you're not vegan or if you're just dairy free or something, you can use lady fingers, but I find that lady fingers are a little bit dry. Um, so just soak your cake. Layer it on. Depending on like the size of your vessel as well, you might have some cake left over, but that's okay because I just like snacking on it like a monster. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's all shaggy and in, you know, a gazillion pieces, it's going to come together once it sets anyway. To use most of the cake and most of the syrup. Okay. Now we just do that again, same thing, vanilla cream and then the coffee cream. So I made this recipe for my blog. I used to have a blog, but I, um, I stopped blogging just cause I'm so lazy. Um, and I'm really proud of this recipe because it really does taste, um, legit. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to BS you and say, oh, this tastes exactly the same, but I would say it's 99%, you know, similar to a regular tiramisu. Because I hate it when, you know, you have healthy desserts and vegan desserts and they're like, oh, it tastes exactly the same. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. You know, it tastes good on its own. It doesn't need to be compared to something else. Okay, now well, that's done. We're gonna tap down again, get rid of any air bubbles and even out the surface. I find that coffee always stains um, my bench top. So I'm always gonna put a bit of bleach, like a bit of bleach when I, when I clean. If anyone has any tips on how to get coffee to not stain everything it comes into contact with. That would be super helpful. Okay, I'll just put crap in there. Now, a 
tiramisu would not be a tiramisu without some cocoa powder on top. Um, if you don't like cocoa powder and you think, you know, it's a bit bitter or whatever, you can also do shaved chocolate. But I like cocoa powder because, I mean, most of this is sweet, so it adds a nice little bitter note and it also looks really cool. So do that. And clean the edges off. And now what you want to do is you want to put a lid on it and chill this for, I would say, a minimum of six hours. Um, overnight is best. Um, and then, yeah, you've got your tiramisu. Um, I've got one already made, so I'll show you sort of what the texture is like. I made one um, just to show you guys, and I've done it in little cups. So you can also do this in little cups, um, and they make great individual desserts. So if you are um, if you have a party or something, you know, and you just want to give everyone one of their own. So I'm going to scoop in and hopefully show you the layers. My shitty iPhone. Can you see? It's firmed up and I guarantee you it tastes, well, I can't guarantee you until I'll try it. So, mm. Mm. it's really good. And I'm usually very critical of the things I make. So if I say it's good, it's good. So um, we reached the end of the live stream and as promised, um, the banner is going to come up on the screen showing you the discount code that you can use on the Fruity AU or NZ website. So it's live eight. It's valid for one week until my next stream next week. And of course, tomorrow, Thursday night, um, Australia time, we're going to have our lovely Lisa do her weekly stream again. And I think she's making a Buddha ball and it looks amazing. So I'm going to be tuning in. So I hope you tune in as well. Um, Lisa does an amazing job every week. So, you know, this is my live stream and she's helped me so much with trying to figure out the technology and stuff. Um, so shout out to Lisa and yeah, um, if you guys make this recipe, don't forget to post it in the group or on, um, you can tag us on Instagram as well. Um, so yeah, until next week, I'll see you and thank you for tuning in. Da, da, da.